Welcome to Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, coming to you from the rolling hills of Big Spring Valley in beautiful Alabama. Katherine Lang offers words of encouragement and hope to help grow up lives boldly pursuing peace and joy. Katherine seeks out the rainbows of life while sharing her lollipops of encouragement along her journey. Here on Growing Hope, she features words to help hope and grow courage, all while challenging herself and listeners to radical choices and bold purpose. This is Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, where we are growing hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. And now, here's your host, Katherine Lang. Hello there, and welcome to this week's Growing Hope Radio, where I, Katherine Lang, stand strong as your rainbows and lollipops host. Not because my life is perfect and the sky is clear, but because I know that I have a promise from my Father, and it is that promise that lets me keep go- growing hope and going on despite the chaos and the storms. I have been spending a lot of time talking lately, talking to God, talking to myself, and pretty much talking to anyone that wants to listen. Because on this journey, I'm trying to understand what I am doing and what I need to be doing. I think it's good to talk it out with myself first, and then to take time to talk it out with God, because it helps me get beyond my emotions. Now, I was talking with my son the other day, and he was getting all excited about the issue at hand. Although, my uh, other son kept mumbling something about both of us being silly because it didn't really matter either way and we were both getting out of hand. But that's beside the point. See, we were discussing, and that discussing was beginning to take on a much heavier... We were both excited, and emotions began to get involved. I reminded my son, and quite honestly, I reminded myself, that if emotions are driving the train, then it will always end up in a ditch. So for me, talking with myself is a great way for me to get through the emotions so that I can see the issue or the situation with the spirit focus instead. It's my way or one of my ways of stepping up or taking it to a level beyond the physical. Um, Are you going to talk to them about that? That's one of my husband's favorite questions. My husband had just asked me that the other day about an ongoing issue that we were discussing. I had shared some new information with him, and I probably shared it before the emotions had fully been put to rest, but I was trying to walk my way through it, and I I wanted to understand what I needed to do with this new information. Now, my husband was encouraging me to take the new information to another person that's in the level, the hierarchy of this particular situation. And he wanted me to share with this other person. I already knew that if I repeated the information again and I had to connect the new information to the backdrop of that ongoing issue, then the emotions were going to be sitting in the driver's seat. (laughs) And so I said, not yet. I have to give my husband credit because in this moment, instead of pushing me on or prodding me to to do, take it to that next level, he just let it go. And let me tell you, a little pushing or prodding is sometimes all I need to just get out of the way and let the emotions take control. But I wanted to have the right focus for dealing with this situation, and that meant I had to choose to get the emotions settled. Now, this week's chat is going to be with me, since I was sharing with you how I talk to myself. I thought I would share a talk from myself, and I'm talking about the little things, how those little things keep adding up and growing up into big things, kind of like the new information added on, added on, ends up exploding this situation, this ongoing situation. And the little things can be positive or negative. So I have to start with the little things, and I have to be aware of the little things if I'm going to continue to get where I want to be. So I want to say thank you first to Heather Randall. And Heather is the wonderful leader of the Christian Women Affiliate. And she provides me with my intro every week. She is also a huge blessing and an amazing support to me. 
because she, <clears throat> she encourages me. She knows when, what to say, when to say it, and how to say it for me in my journey. And she's not even doing it on purpose. She just has a heart for people. And because of her heart and because of her hard work, she keeps the CWA moving in the right direction. Now, if you don't know about the CWA, please take a moment after the show to check it out, ChristianWomenAffiliates.com. There is also a a Facebook group, and you can join for free. Now, there are other um, items that you can participate in, like radio, like webinars, but the great thing is you have this free group of women that are on a journey to grow closer to Christ and that are working together to build each other up and to grow the community. Everybody could use a little extra encouragement now and then, right? And speaking of encouragement, I'm going to give a big shout out to Constance and Carol, my coffee diva friends, for taking time to sit with me and share with me because connections are so important. I I want us to connect. But I also want us to make that next effort to grow up the relationships from those connections because growing the relationships is a vital part of becoming what you are uniquely designed to become. So thank you. Thank you for joining me here on Growing Hope. If you're not already subscribed to the monthly newsletter, The Moment of Hope, it goes out at the end of each month, then you can click on the link over at my website, www.katherinelang.com, and you can sign up today. As a special thank you for signing up, you will receive a free download of Stand. That's an ebook about taking a stand in this world, and it offers practical tips and suggestions for standing, because standing is not always easy, as easy as you think it should be. <laughs> at least it's not for me. <clears throat> now, there are days when standing's easy, But there are days when it is a struggle. Um, Usually it's those days when I wasn't really paying attention to where I was stepping, and so I stumble. But I'm blessed to have people around me that pick me up and they urge me on. And sometimes they do it without even thinking about it or without even realizing they're doing it. They uh, They ask for my help. And in asking for my help, They shift my focus from my own worries and my own woes to finding a way to grow hope and encouragement in others. And by growing hope and encouragement in others, I actually find my own hope. Because helping and reaching out and encouraging others, it helps me and it encourages me. That's why I remind you of the importance of relationships. Having people around you that want you to succeed, that want you to reach the unique you that you're designed to be, and people that want to see you become more than you even imagined in that moment. Having these people around you will make a difference in the journey. So so connect with each other. Grow relationships. Stop to have coffee. Send a letter. You know those paper correspondences that we used to all use before the Internet took over our lives? Create a foundation of relationships, and you'll find that you have a fountain of encouragement pouring around you. My Sunday school and my Bible Bible study teachers were reminding me that it is easier to choose what we know and what we see than it is to choose in faith. And I get what they're saying to some extent, When I was in high school, I was prone to put off doing my school projects until the night before. I'd stay up all night the night before the project was due, and I would do all that I had to do. Usually it involved sketches or um, reports or sketches and reports. So I'd stay up all night. I'd get no sleep, but I'd have my project ready, and I'd turn it in that day at school. Now, sometimes I could survive at school despite having not slept or having not had any rest at all. But some days I had to check out and go home. But I still repeated the process every time I got a project. It was the way I always did things. But if I had chosen to do one part of that project per day from the time it was given to me, then wouldn't it have been easier? So just because I've always done it that way doesn't mean that that way 
is easier. And yet I choose that way. Now, I was having coffee with Constance and Carol this week, and we were talking about this very topic. <clears throat> it's a, it is easier to choose what we know and to choose what we see. So why is it easier? Well, today we're going to be talking about the easy concept a little bit deeper and exploring the idea that maybe the path that God has designed is the easier path after all. I know it goes against conventional thinking, and that is why I titled today's show, uh, 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 you know, Beyond Conventional, because when everyone is saying it, it can be hard to step out beyond that. But maybe God's way really is the easier way. If you've listened to me for more than a few minutes, or if you've read what I've written, then you know I am not about conventional thinking. How can I live outside the box if I'm limiting my thinking to the way things have always been thought of? You have to think different. You have to look at it without any predetermined outcomes. You have to dare to see beyond the limits that have been placed in front of you, either by yourself or by other people or by circumstances. When I was little, when I was much, much younger, I could flip around on the trampoline like a jumping beam. I'd flip forwards, I'd flip backwards, I'd flip from my knees to my knees, I'd flip from my feet to my knees, from my knees to my feet. And one day, I was on the trampoline, and a neighbor came over to help me fix my flip. And by fix, I assume he meant he wanted to improve my flip to look more like what he could do. So he stood on the trampoline with me, and he explained to me how to flip. I took my jump and then flipped, or I think it would be better to say that I attempted to flip because I was doing things different. I was more focused on what I was told to do than I was on the finished project. What happened was that was my first problem, being focused on the wrong thing, because being focused on all of this information he gave me let me overlook the fact that he was standing on the trampoline with me. So when I pressed down on the mat, all of that bounce, all of that energy went to him. It was stolen by his presence. I I not only was focused on the wrong thing, but I gave all of my energy to someone else. I did not flip at that moment. I did land awkwardly on the back of my neck, and I scared myself silly. I, I thought for a moment that I had broken my neck. And to this day, I can no longer do a backflip on the trampoline. I'm thinking that maybe, just maybe, this is where I am in my walk with God. See, something that should be easy, something that I've done numerous times, is not only now complicated, but all of a sudden, it it leaves me feeling falling and, and feeling awkward and feeling out of control and sometimes landing on my neck and thinking I've broken it because I'm listening to others tell me how to do what I'm trying to do. So my focus is on the wrong place. I'm letting people tell me what to do or what to say or how to act or how to dress or how to eat or how to drink or how to talk. And the list goes on for the system that will fix what's not even broken. If I just do what I know to do, then it is fixed. I'm looking at this journey, this quote, it should be easy, but I'm still making the same mistakes, unquote, journey. And I'm left wondering, why can't I? Or or more importantly, why don't I? Because I know I can. In many instances, I already have. I can. I have. I've done it. But I'm letting people complicate the situation. The next thing I do is give my energy away to things that shouldn't be there in the first place. And it happens so easy. I'm almost certain that Netflix was designed by the enemy with the sole intention of stealing my energy. (laughs) Because I'll sit down for a break, and then two days later I realize I haven't moved. (laughs) You know, I gave all of my energy away to, to nothing. And nothing makes a task more difficult than not having the energy to accomplish the task. I have a massive flower garden. 
and it wasn't supposed to be massive. Let me let me start off by saying that when I designed it, I planned it with you know thin little strips, nice little strips that kind of curved around the property. And I asked my husband to go out and till me some flower beds. And then I heard the tractor running, and I realized he was plowing flower beds. So instead of my nice little two foot flower beds, I ended up with six foot flower beds. But being the the challenge driven individual I am, when I saw my six foot flower beds, I thought, okay, now I have to fill them. <laughs> So I I very quickly started putting plants in there. Now, if you have six-foot flower beds, you have to keep those flower beds clean in order to be able to enjoy your flower beds. But when I got pregnant with our youngest son, I could not go out and work in the garden. And then the next year, I couldn't go out and work in the garden because I had an infant, or at least it was as good an excuse as any as I could come up with. (laughs) But two years later... Um, I realized that I had let the garden get out of control, and it was time to fix it. So I went out there at the break of dawn, and I began pulling weeds and digging small trees and clearing out the neglect that I had allowed to take over my garden. After several hours, I realized I hadn't even made a dent in the massive flower beds, and I was exhausted. Why even bother if I'm not going to get anything done? You know? So I quit. I walked away. I, again, surrendered to the weeds. I let them have the flower beds. But the next year, I was more determined. I wanted my flower beds to be back to their glory. So I started even earlier on cleaning them out. And this time, I got smarter. I only worked a little bit every single day. And I timed myself. I would only let myself be out there for a little bit. And even on those days when I didn't have a whole lot of energy, I still had enough determination to go for just that little bit, just that little bit of time in the garden. Now, the end results were not perfect because, again, the gardens are massive, (laughs) but they brought me one step closer to where I wanted to be. And when I tried to do it all at once, I lost the energy to do any of it. But when I did it a little bit at a time, all those little bits added up. Now, there's still plenty that needs to be done in the garden, but with each little bit means there is a little less that needs to be done. Or, because I invested that little bit, it takes even less of an investment the next time around to tackle the same project. See, I can't let my inactions or my choices or the circumstances around me steal my energy. Despite what others say and despite what I feel at times, it is up to me to make the difference in my life. I was talking to you about um, my two biggest reasons for not doing what I need to be doing and sometimes even what I want to be doing. I told you that listening to others about my journey was one of the top reasons that I have struggled to do what I know to do. Even as I was creating this radio program, the pull of the rest of the house playing and messing around, what they were conspiring against me to keep me from doing what I knew I needed to do and what I really love to do. I love sharing with y'all. I love being here with y'all. I love being able to write and create. So in that moment, listening to others was hindering my ability to do what I not only needed to do or wanted to do, but I love to do. And for me, the second biggest thing is having my energy stolen away, sometimes given away by choice, sometimes stolen by default because I'm not even paying attention. And again, even right now, even when I was creating the radio show, I was going to take a break because, you know, we all deserve a break. And from all of the nothing that I had accomplished so far in the day. But fortunately, I got a notice from a group that I'm involved in, the 10-Minute Novelist Facebook group. And they were having a Facebook chat, hearing with them and listening to them motivated me to keep on going. But giving away my energy is the second biggest problem for me. Or maybe it's as much my determination as it is my energy. But either way, I get dragged down because of my choices or my inaction. And once I'm down, it's hard to get up and get going again. And then I get down, you know, because I I kick myself for not doing what I know to do, and and that kicking steals even more of my energy and more of my focus. And I turn to people and their ideas and their suggestions, and I listen to what they're doing and what they say I need to be doing, and I stop listening to my own heart and my own experiences. 
I fall deeper into that hole that I dug, and I find that I have more issues that are stealing the energy and and more issues that are um, shaking my focus from what I need to be doing or what I want to be doing. And then I turn to people (laughs) even more, and I get down even deeper, and this cycle just continues until I find myself so deep that I don't even believe it's possible to get out. I've been there. I know, it's a shocking confession for the Rainbows and Lollipops host, but I have been so deep in that hole that when I looked up, it was nothing but darkness. I suspected that there was a top, there was a ceiling, there was an opening above me, or I at least had enough left in me to hope that there was. But I saw no light. And I stayed in that state for months. I cried when I was alone, and I preferred to be alone so that I could cry. I made myself sick with crying and with hating, not the world, not the circumstances, but myself for even being in that state. And then one day, because that's how it happens, and then suddenly, and then one day all of the past of the the things that I had fed into my life, the teachings that I had received, the studying that I had done, all of that kind of stirred together and managed to break through that darkness just a little bit. Now remember that a little bit is all that you need. See, a little bit of light in darkness makes a big difference. I noticed this in a very tangible way when we were touring um, some of the local caves. We have one cave that's right up the road, and, and we've been to several others. We love to go visit the different caves. And I've noticed that almost on every single tour, at some point during the tour, the tour guide is going to gather everyone around and is going to turn off all the visible light. So you can see just how dark it is in the cave. But before the guide turns off the light, he or she is always going to tell the people, turn off your phones. If you have watches with lights that you know in the in the faces, you have to put them away because you cannot see total darkness if there is any light whatsoever. And that's kind of what happened for me. I felt a piece of that light. And because I felt it, I recognized that I recognized what I was doing. I was wallering. I was I was stuck in the the hate of myself for not doing what I needed to do, but because I was stuck there, I couldn't do what I needed to do, so I hated myself. And I recognized that and I took action to stop it. I got up. And that one action led to another action. Until the next time I looked around, I was standing out under the sun. I suspect we all have our tipping points that drive us away from where we're supposed to be and where we need to be. But what do we do to get over them or around them or through them? All of the holes are not so big that you can't see the top. Some are huge, but some are some are tiny. Big struggles like finances or weight or strained relationships, these things can pile up and together they can become even bigger than that hole I dug for myself. It's 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 accumulative because little bits are cumulative. Keep that in mind. Whether the little bits are negative or the little bits are positive. So little bits of negative. I, I put on five extra pounds of weight. I am behind on one bill. I am fighting with my brother. Well, that all piles up and it feels even more heavy than it would be if it was just one problem. That is what I've been facing in my life recently. The little bits, the little bits that are trying to pile up on me and push me down and fight me with each movement that I'm trying to make. Now, there are still times when I don't try, I don't even fight. I just sit back and do nothing because I'm tired of the struggle. I'm tired of the push. I'm tired of the fight. But despite my inaction, I am still continuing to study. And I'm continuing to feed that spirit. And I'm reading the scripture every single day. And 
I've joined my husband in a weekly Bible study. And the other morning, all of those actions, all of those little bits broke me through. I woke up free. I woke up free from that struggle that had been causing me to be bitter. I woke up free from that pushing where I was I was trying to make something happen. I woke up free from that fight against myself and against the world. I was free. And I was free not because I suddenly did something amazing, but because I realized that I will never do anything to make it happen. I realized that it wasn't up to me. My freedom was bought and paid for. And that, my friends, is the number one reason that path is the easy path. It's bought and paid for. It was done for me, so it doesn't have to be done by me. When I can get my mind around just that little bit of information, then I can get past the people and past the energy, and I can live boldly. See, I want to live that bold life. I want to step out in strength and determination. I want to walk on water. But you know, as long as I continue to let others dictate my direction and distract me from that bold life, then I will never be in a position to live it out or to live out in the power that I'm designed to live it out in. And you know what? I want God to step in. That's that's my request. I need God to step in and fix this. (laughs) But he's been reminding me time and time again, especially recently, that he has done it. It is done. The ravens are delivering the blessings to the bend in the river. The sea has been parted. The victory has been won. It is done. I don't need God to step in because God has already done it. I just need to grow up. I am willing to step out. I need to stop asking and to start doing in faith with boldness on purpose. I was reminded just this morning that what I do reveals to the world what I believe. You know, it's no wonder that the world is not convinced about God, especially if they're looking at me, because what I'm showing in my actions is not much to be impressed about. It's time. It is time for me to act like I know. And it is time for me to grow up my knowledge so that I can believe that walking on water is not the exception, but the rule. Now, Growing Hope Radio has to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to be talking some more about these little things and how these little things add up and how to wrangle these little things. Growing Hope Radio will be back after these brief messages. Can we chat? Sitting around with your friends and sharing your ideas and thoughts can be the perfect way to grow encouragement for your day. Discipling Women at Damage Control is part of the Christian Discipleship TV family. Every Thursday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time, Caroline Savage, Lynn Marino, Catherine Lang, and Valia Drakes come together to share joy in the Word, of the Word, and through the Word. You can watch the show live or visit the Christian Discipleship Ministries.com website for all the archived programs. Come be a part of Discipling Women Damage Control where we're controlling the damage the enemy can do in our lives by learning and growing through the Word. Christian Women Affiliate is a free community for Christian women who seek to be all that God has called them to be, with many affordable services including radio and webinar hosting and an outstanding review crew. You have many exciting opportunities for promoting your message. Join Christian Women Affiliate today 
and make quality connections that lead to mentoring and resources that complement your calling and impact our world. Visit ChristianWomenAffiliate.com today. Got hope? Growing Hope seeks to instill the courage that your heart needs to live out the bold life grounded in hope. The monthly newsletter offers tips, inspirational stories, and scriptures to help grow up hearts that are open to pursue the extraordinary. Visit KatherineLane.com slash promotion and sign up and receive a moment of hope. The Growing Hope monthly newsletter. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. You are listening to Growing Hope Radio, building up hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. Hello and welcome back to Growing Hope Radio, where this week I, Catherine Lang, your Rainbows and Lollipops host, I have determined to live out the bold life that God has designed for me to live and that God has created for me to live. And you know what? I begin to recognize that it takes just one step. It takes just one little thing. And then that one little thing adds up with another little thing. And then all of a sudden, I have enough to break me free. But I also have to be aware that the little things, they come in the form of the negative as well. And it's those negatives that can be so small that they're almost imperceptible. You don't even notice them. But they will add up just as well. And a pile of negatives is never a positive thing in my life. Yet, even knowing this, and it's with you, I still let it happen to me. Just recently, I was focused, and I mean head down, taking over the world kind of focus. And I literally ran into the issue that has been plaguing my family for the last several months. Now, I did not set out to encounter the issue. As a matter of fact, I was determined not to deal with the issue. It's almost as if the issue set out to distract me or to encounter me to keep me off guard. And as I stood there being distracted, a little negative piled on to a little more negative, and I was just this close to getting out of control. And that's when I remembered that at the root of this whole issue was a person that was hurting and discouraged, and that's what was driving the issue. And so I shared that. I shared my thoughts on the idea that the hurt and the discouragement were driving the issue. And in my sharing, I made a shift. And the moment that I made that one little change in my focus, the distraction was broken. And I was able to get back on target. But it still amazes me at how easy I can get sucked back into distractions. It reminds me some of my youngest son and his video game. Now, I give him a five-minute warning before he has to turn it off, and it usually comes after a 30-minute warning and a 10-minute warning. I count it down for him, but it never fails. He always wants five more minutes because, really, Mom, what could five more minutes hurt? And that is how I personally stumble into the abyss that is the distractions for my life. Just five more minutes, (laughs) or just one more bite, or just a little bit more. Really, what does that little bit more matter anyway? The other day, my dad was talking about this man that was pushing up to the edge, to that line of acceptable, and each time he approached the line, he'd get a little bit closer, but he would never cross the line. But each time he approached the line, he'd get a little bit closer. But he'd never cross the line. Until one day he looked around. And he realized that the line had been left far behind him. See, just a little bit, he'd crossed over. And he'd stepped on it. And he'd moved on it. And he'd even forgotten where the line was. But it happened just a little bit at a time. Just one step at a time. My life... It's, I let the distractions suck me in, but I'm growing to the place where I'm learning to recognize them 
and regain my focus. And I have a little bit of my son showing up in my actions towards God. And sometimes I have a little bit of that line crossing man in my attitude or my inactions. But I know the answer. I know the key. And yet I still find myself pushing up to the edge only to discover that somewhere along the little bits I've crossed the line. Or I'm still sitting there caught up in self. And when I'm caught up in self, I declare what I need and I want. And it's I, 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 I. And I even beg for just five more minutes, completely unaware, until it's too late, that my whole life is zipping past me. I have no excuse anymore. I know better. I've written it. I've spoken it. I've taught it. And you know, I believe it. It's about time I make a habit of doing it. If I want to live the bold and the blessed life that I'm going to, that God desires for me and that God is growing me towards, then I have to choose to act better than I have been acting. Now, there are four steps this week, just four, four steps that will add up a little bit at a time to big changes for my life. And through these changes, I will be acting in a way that people will notice. Number one, I have to recognize. I have to recognize that there are things and people trying to hold me back. Number two, organize. It is important to organize my life and my surroundings and my schedule. My God is a God of order. I need to emulate Him in my life. Three, visualize. I need to see the finish line. I have to see where I'm going if I'm going to know if I'm getting there. Four, activize. In other words, I have to put it to action. I have to get going. I have to do it already. I've said it before and I'll say it again because eventually I will be paying attention to what I'm saying. I can if I will. The only way I'm going to get there, into that place that God has prepared and that God desires for me, is if I make the choice to go where He is leading me. Now, Growing Hope Radio needs to take a quick break, but when we return, we're going to dig in a little bit more to these four steps and see how we can apply them to our lives a little bit at a time to begin living in that exceeding abundance that God has planned. Growing Hope Radio will be right back. This is your Growing Hope Scripture Focus. Each week I will share a favorite Bible verse and challenge you to memorize and study that verse over the next seven days. By putting the Word of God in our hearts and in our minds with consistency, those words will settle in and begin to grow fruit that shows forth in our own words and in our actions. This week's verse is Colossians 2, 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. See, the world will continue to change and to mold in a way that is not in line with the Word. That is the design of the world, after all. And it can be easy to get caught up in these changes because they may seem right or seem compassionate or seem good. But it is not about seeming, and it is not even about the world. There is only one way I will ever understand the Word, and that is to say so focused on the Word that I immediately recognize the deceit or the traditions of men or the principles of the world. You learn to recognize the counterfeit by studying the genuine article. This has been your Growing Hope Scripture Focus. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. This is Mason Hawks of the United Earth Central Corps. I've encountered an unidentified spacecraft that has refused to answer all attempts to communicate. It has reacted in a hostile manner and launched several combat fighters to engage me. My ship is damaged and I'm not going to make it, so... I've done a memory scan and embedded it in this transmission. Please. 
not sure how I got here or even where here is. Can you boost the signal? I woke up in the wreckage of a crashed shuttle. Is anyone receiving this? Can anyone out there hear me? The family satellite has been destroyed. My signal's too weak. If you can hear this, you've got to warn Earth. We are being invaded. There's no hope of warning Earth in time. The aliens that shot down my shuttlecraft plan to take over UCC territory. The remaining distinction. I'm stranded on this primitive backwater planet and trapped in some kind of experimental biosuit. We are being attacked by some sort of... too many of them. Some sort of shape-changing alien beings. If you are receiving this... Please, relay the warning to Earth. Stars of the Connery by S.P. Dorning. Ask for it at your local bookstore or order it on Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble today. Audio produced by Spiritblade.net. Christian sci-fi and fantasy. Unsterilized, unsafe, unleashed. You are back with Growing Hope Radio, and I am still Catherine Lang, your faithful and faith-filled Rainbows and Lollipops host. And remember, I don't live in a delusional world void of struggles and trials. I know these things happen. I face the things down on a regular basis. My Rainbows and Lollipops attitude, my possibility vision, comes from the hope that I have been planting in me and that I seek out every time that I look out. That is what growing hope is all about. I know that if a seed of hope can be planted and nurtured until it produces fruit, then all things become possible in that heart. I want to share hope. I want to instill courage. I want to help you walk out that unique life with a boldness that would never be understood by the world, but that the world hungers to understand. And I want to grow it up so much that their pursuit, the pursuit that you have in in hope, grows up a strength that tears down the mountains of the world, that sees beyond what the world perceives. Now, this week, we're pursuing a life outside the normal way of thinking a little bit at a time. I know you're shocked that I would ever suggest anything outside of normal, (laughs) but hey, let's try something new today. We're going to break down walls a little bit at a time, and we're going to live beyond the the world mindset. We're going to dare to walk on water, and we're going to dare to tear down the mountains of the world. Now, earlier I shared that there was two struggles that I've been listening to, been listening to people, in particular to people over the word. Now, if the word created the people, then how could the people ever know better than the word? (laughs) But I find myself there. And my second issue, things steal my energy. Who, or worse, making the choice to just give my energy away. I know we all have our own issues, but no matter what it is that you have to crawl over, break down, or get through, you can get there by following the four steps. First, recognize. Second, organize. Third, visualize. And finally, activize. It is so easy to get caught up in things when you aren't paying attention to what's going on around you. There's nothing worse in a home with kids than have all of a sudden realized that it's gotten completely quiet. Because completely quiet in a house with kids usually means something insane has happened. (laughs) And so we recognize often too late the damage that has been done. So it is important in growing up this journey, this little bit, that we recognize the negatives and the positives before they mount up to more than we can handle, especially the negatives. The first thing you have to recognize, see, until I see that something is amiss in my journey, I will not know something is amiss in my journey. The best example I can give is The little bits can be more damaging because if you're just a little bit off the target, 
then you don't even know you are off the target until after you let your arrow fly. And by then it's too late. Now, if you're facing a complete different direction than your target, you recognize a lot easier that, hey, something's amiss. But it's the little things that can be the hardest to recognize. And until I recognize it, I will continue to do the same things over and over again. I will continue to miss the target because I'm a little bit off. And then I'll be shocked that I don't get different results each time that I fire. I have to admit that I have an issue. I have to admit that I'm not hitting the target because I'm not aiming correctly. And then I can begin to adjust my actions and deal with with the results. So the first thing I have to do is I have to recognize. The second thing I have to do is I have to get organized. God is a God of order. He has been from the beginning and he will be at the end. He is about order. So I need to be about order in my life. Until I can get around the stuff and focus on the necessary things, I'm going to continue to struggle to find time for the necessary things. That pile is going to distract me and keep me off target. The extras that have piled up in my schedule are going to distract me and keep me from doing what I am designed to do. I have to weed it out. I have to let it go. I have to put the focus on what God has designed me to do. Until I do that, I will continue to be distracted. I have to find a way to get my world, my life, in order if I want to get my walk moving in the right direction. First recognize, second organize. The third thing I have to do is I have to visualize. Until I can see it, until I can recognize this is where I'm going, until I understand that, I will struggle with each step that I take. I will struggle with whether or not it's the right step. Until I can believe that it is possible to do it, then I will never be in a place to do it. I have to be able to close my eyes and see that finish line so that I can begin reaching towards it. And finally, the fourth thing I have to do is I have to activize. And yes, I'm determined that is a real word. (laughs) Until I put it to action, it's just words. So a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. And that adds up to something significant. It's not any easier to stay where that where I am than it is to get up and go where I need to go. The world has told me that it is, but it's not. People have told me that it is, but it's not. I have told me that it is, but it is not. It has to get to the place where I truly believe it, and then I can act in it. But taking the steps to do what I know to do, that's just the beginning. Recognize, organize, visualize, activize. It's easier, it's better, and it's what I was uniquely designed to do. I can do it, if I will. Growing Hope Radio needs to take one more break, but when we return, I'm going to share with you some of the scriptures that are helping me take these four steps and apply them to my life a little bit at a time so that I can grow up this bold, purpose-driven life that God desires for me. Growing Hope Radio will be back after these messages. R&D Computer Solutions, serving all your computer needs. We provide low-cost hosting options, complete website development, and online troubleshooting service. No matter what your needs, the staff at R&D Computer Solutions will be there to help you find the answer. Visit www.rdcss.com to learn more about R&D Computer Services, a family-owned and Christian-run quality computer business. This is the Growing Hope Review. Each week I will share with you one of my favorite Bible studies, books, movies, or television shows, and I will tell you why it moved me to share. Although I know that we each get something different out of the things that we encounter, I also know that when we're moved by words, then others are likely to be moved as well. This week's review is on the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. 
And I'm talking about all seven of the books because asking me to pick a favorite would not be possible. Each book has a unique element and lesson that has always delighted me. Now, I chose these children's books because I firmly believe they offer hope and insight to all those that take the time to read them. I have read one set of the books so many times through that I've broken the binding. I used to read the Chronicles to my children during nap time. See, I appreciate the connection to the scripture and the way that Lewis reveals love in a new and exciting way. Each of the books runs around 250 pages or under and can be purchased through most online bookstores. Now, here's the warning. There is some violence in them because of the battles that are fought between good and evil. But those that do the wrong thing reap what they sow, and those that do the good eventually find their way into the blessings. If you have not read the Chronicles of Narnia, then now is the time. You need to read these books. If you have not read these books in a while, it's time to revisit them. They will give you even more insight into love and into hope and into the possible. Today is the day to find your way back through the wardrobe. This has been the Growing Hope Review. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. The sound of the door unlocking made her heart speed up. Her reasonable mind told her there was nothing on the other side, but reason had lost its argument long ago. It was time to face the past, no matter how much she wanted to run. Run, the pulse-quickening first novel in the Big Spring series from Catherine C. Lang. Don't look back. Get it today in paperback or ebook at Amazon.com or CatherineLang.com. Run. Welcome back. You are with Growing Hope Radio, and I am still Catherine Lang, your determined and encouraging Rainbows and Lollipops host. And thank you so much for joining me today, where we have been talking about breaking out of the ordinary and the acceptable a little bit at a time, so that we can tear down the walls and live free and live bold and live on purpose. At the first of the show, I was sharing with you two of my biggest struggles, that I'd been listening to people instead of the Word, even though it was the Word that created people. And I've been listening to people instead of my own spirit. So I've been listening to people. But I've also been letting things steal my energy or I've been readily giving my energy away. And those two things, knowing, listening to the Word and to my spirit and, and keeping my energy, they're vital in my journey. In the past I've been telling you that my walk uh, is designed for me but I keep letting these issues get in my way and that I've been using four steps to try to realign my life I've been recognize organize visualize and activize but now I want to talk more about the scripture because again I need to listen to the word first because if I'm feeding the word into my heart, then I can continue to grow and walk out the blessed life that God designed for me. Now, Jesus was often comparing us to vines and trees. In Matthew 7, 16 through 20, Jesus is warning us about the false prophets by saying that bad fruit will not come from a good tree. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit you will recognize them, and by my fruit others will recognize me. I'm beginning to recognize that I'm not where I'm supposed to be because I'm not exactly happy with my fruit. If what I'm producing is good, then I continue down that path. But if what I'm doing is revealing bad fruit, then it's time for a change. The scripture also tells us the importance of organization in all aspects of our lives. 1 Corinthians 14.33 states it plainly, God is not a God of disorder. But of peace. Disorder is not from God. 
the scripture goes on to say that everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. I understand that that Paul was speaking specifically to the congregation about church order, but if God is a God of order, then it speaks to my desk and my schedule and my home as well. I have to see to to get to where I need to be. I have to be looking, but I can't look if there's clutter in the way. I also need light to be able to see where I'm going. And Jesus tells us in Matthew, uh, Matthew 5, 14 and 16, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. In other words, I am the light of the world. The world looks to me to see Jesus. Y'all, that's a scary thought because I know that I am not showing the world the Jesus that I want them to know. I am the small light that casts away even the biggest darkness because darkness cannot stand up to light. I have to see it. I have to share it. And I do it by living it. And when I step out in that boldness, I take that action. That's when people take notice. James tells us in chapter 2 verse 18... I'll show you my faith by my works. See, my faith in God and who he is and what he says about my life, it's revealed in the actions I take. And if I analyze my actions and I analyze my fruit, what does it say about my current walk? Where is my trust sitting? James also says that action reveals what I believe about the word. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks in his face at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in that law, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. It really does come down to this. I am a reflection of what I believe. If I don't like what I am reflecting, then I have to grow up to a place where I can believe better. And I can only do that through a personal interaction with the Word. Now, thank you so much for joining me today on Growing Hope Radio. You have challenged me. You've challenged me to grow up more so that I can step out more, so that I can be that reflection of Christ that I want the world to see. I would so appreciate your thoughts on this growing up journey. Now, you can share with me through my website at www.katherinelang.com forward slash contact, or you can send me an email at radio at katherinelang.com. And you can always find me around social media and the internet by searching Catherine C. Lang. I'm Catherine C. Lang on all the sites. Now, I'll be back next week, same Rainbow's Place and same Lollipop's time. Until then, be blessed and be a blessing. Thanks for joining us this week for Growing Hope with Catherine Lang. Catherine is a leader in encouragement, a networking specialist, and your Hope Smith extraordinaire. To learn more about Growing Hope, visit Catherine's website at www.catherinelang.com. That's www.k-a-t-h-r-y-n-l-a-n-g.com. Catherine is also available to speak or teach at your next event. Use the contact form on the website or email Catherine with queries or questions at contactus at katherinelang.com. If you are looking for more hope and inspiration for your week, you can sign up for the Reflections column that mails out each Sunday at www.katherinelang.com slash reflections. And be sure to join us back here each week for Growing Hope, where Catherine shares her heart for encouragement and her vision for hope. Until next week, 
Keep watching for that place where your heart is open to pursue the extraordinary.